Whether you're looking to start a quest-based YouTube channel or you're looking to just show off your Population 1 kills, there is a learning curve to putting together VR videos with the Oculus Quest 2. And today, I'm here to dispel that and show you the best way, or at least the way I put together my VR gameplay videos. So hopefully, you can replicate that and get some awesome gameplay out there for people to see. Now, the first thing you're going to need is a PC to be able to do this. And today, I'm using the Asus ROG Zephyrus Duo 15, powered by the 10th generation Intel Core i7 processor. This thing is a beast. Huge thank you to Asus and Intel for supporting the channel and sponsoring this video by sending this device for me to check out. It's got dual screens. It's got a 2070 Super inside of this sucker. It is amazing. It rips through editing and it rips through gameplay for virtual reality. So I'm excited to show this off. I'll show you why I love it here in just a minute. But first, like I said, you're gonna need a PC and you're gonna need a Quest or Quest 2 headset. Obviously, you're gonna need some gameplay too, so let's jump in to the Quest 2, record a quick clip so I can show you how I put it all together. All right, here we are inside of Walkabout Mini Golf, and this is what we're gonna pull into the computer and edit in just a minute and show you how to put it all together. I'm just gonna record a quick clip right now and show you some gameplay here really quickly. I'm not actually gonna play the game, but I do wanna give you a quick tip. Now, recording video is as simple as going to the sharing tab and hitting the record button. But one tip that I always do to help me sync my footage because I do record it separately is actually what I call the up, down, cross, cross method. And I know that sounds stupid, but this is exactly how I do it. I'll hit the record button. I'll go to the main menu where I can see my controllers. I'll hold my arms up in front of me so the camera can see them. I'll go up, down, cross, cross, up, down, just like that. It allows me some syncing points that makes it easier for me to sync my gameplay with my recording of myself from the camera, and that's about it. Then you go, go ahead and go ahead and play, and we'll just jump back into the editor right now and take a look at this footage and show you how to put it all together. All right, so once you've recorded your gameplay, you need to move your footage from your camera onto your PC. You're also gonna need to plug in your Quest 2, and then we're gonna transfer the footage off of the Quest 2. Now, I use SideQuest to do this because I sideload a lot. If you don't have access to SideQuest, if you have not situated your Quest to sideload, I can put a link in the description for you to check out how to do that, and you can take everything off with SideQuest, or you can just drag and drop, which is how I'm gonna show you right now. First off, make sure you put your headset on and allow access to the data if you haven't done that already. Once you've done that, it'll pop up on your PC and you'll see Quest 2. Choose what you wanna do with this device. Just open the device to view the files, click on internal shared storage, go to Oculus, video shots, and you're going to find your footage. Now, I have a lot of footage on here, uh, but the footage that I'm looking for is going to say walkabout mini golf, and it's going to be right there. That's the newest footage right there. So what happens is, is when you record on the Quest, if you record in the main menu, you start your recording there, it's going to say Oculus VR shell. You'll see that right here. If it is in a game, it'll say usually the developer and then the game. So like I said, mighty coconut walkabout mini golf. You're gonna drag this clip over and you're gonna put it into a file on your PC so you have all the things you need. All right, so now that all the files that I need are here, I've already dragged and dropped the audio because I do my audio separately and my video. I'm not gonna show you the audio today because that doesn't really mean anything to you. That's just me syncing up my audio for my voice for the camera. But you're gonna drag and drop your camera and your footage into your editor. I'm using Adobe Premiere Pro CC today. That is my preferred editor. There's a lot of free editors out there that you can use. There's some really good ones. I'll put some links in the description to those as well. But this is where this computer starts to shine for me. You see, I use a dual monitor setup for my desktop, which is behind the camera over there. And after getting a dual monitor setup, I told myself I was never gonna go back to a single monitor setup, although my laptop was a single monitor. When Asus Intel reached out to me to take a look at this laptop, I was thrilled because it's got dual monitors. You can see here, I've got, let me move this cord out of the way, I've got my timeline and my project folder or files or bin, they call it in Premiere, over here. And this is revolutionary because I can have my video display here, I can have my source window over here, 
and I can have my effects here while having everything else down here. This allows me way more screen real estate because I can have this way bigger. If this screen wasn't here, my timeline and my bins would be up underneath of this and it would reduce this by half. But anyways, that's why I love this so much because uh, it is revolutionary. This screen is just amazing. For productivity purposes or if you're streaming regular PC games, this works really well because you can put all your streaming options right down on the bottom. But anyways, let's get back to the editing and show you exactly how I go about this. So you can actually see the white lines that I have in my videos right here. I will upload this file so you can download it to make it easy for you so you have a ready made template to do this with. And I'll show you exactly how I set all of this up. All right, now the first step is to drag our footage from the camera onto our timeline. And normally I would take this and key this out with the green screen and color correct. I'm not gonna do that today because I don't have all the presets saved on this PC for that specifically and it's not something you really care about because you're probably not gonna be recording in front of a green screen and if you are, you'll have your own settings. So we're just gonna take that and we're gonna drag this underneath of our gameplay overlay. And what we wanna do is we wanna scale this down. Oops, not that one. We'll scale down the actual footage. Scale down this footage so that it fits inside of this box. And it doesn't matter if it overlaps some beyond these white lines, and I'll show you why in just a second. So we're gonna go ahead and scale that up somewhere around there, okay? Now what we wanna do is we wanna find where we started. Now what I'm gonna do is you saw me record that piece. I'm gonna go ahead and go to the portion where I did the up, down, and left, and right, and show you why that's so important. We'll go ahead a few frames until we get to the spot right there. See that? See where I start to go up? This is what I do. I'm gonna go right here, right where it's straight, and then first big jump, and I'll show you why this is so important. Now that seems stupid, and it is a lot of work going into this, but trust me, this works. The next step, we're gonna find the same point in the actual gameplay video. Now we've got some artifacts going on here because when I recorded this, I recorded it at the wrong bit rate, and so it's caused some issues, but it'll still work for what we're gonna do. So you see that first jump right there? Boom, right there. Now I'm going to take and I'm going to go ahead and cut the clip right there and delete this section here. And we're going to go ahead and move this back. Move this over top of this. Let's see. Move that. Oh, this is touch screen, by the way, <laughs> which is even better. So we'll uh, go ahead and go over here. And, of course, I didn't uh, save that spot where I'd done that. So let's go back here. One thing you could do is add markers or you can cut it at that spot. When I'm using Premiere Pro, I do either one. Depends on what I'm doing. So we'll go right th there probably. Just put a split mark, cut it right there, add this to it. And then what you wanna do is you wanna scale this up so that it's the same size as the, as the screen. And then move it over so it matches underneath of this. And see, this is why I said it wasn't so big of a deal to have that overlap. So there you go, there's your gameplay and your video. And I'll hit the button and you'll see it matches up. You can do a little bit, you can always check it a little bit more and see exactly uh, if you can make it a frame or two difference, but usually that's pretty easy and that's how I put my footage together. And the next step would be to take the logo for a walkabout mini golf or whatever game you're playing and put it under the top left corner up here. That's what I always do. And that usually has worked well for me. Now you can, there's another way you can do it. You could key yourself out and then take this and scale it up to 180. Once you scale to 180, it fits in the screen, or usually does anyways. Let's scale it up, maybe it's, maybe it's 185. Well, it's 193. <laughs> I was wrong. <laughs> but anyways, if you scale it up and you position it where you want it to be, you can always move your other footage, you can get rid of this, and move your other footage over top of this, and key yourself out if you'd like to, and then move it over. I usually scale it down if I do that even further than this so that it doesn't take up as much screen real estate. And you don't have to key it if you don't want to. You could always just put yourself on there and use a crop to crop out that portion over there or something. That's another way to do it. I personally like my way of doing it only because you get all the screen real estate. If you see here, let's take a look really quick at this footage. Look at the tops and bottoms. See how much it cuts off at the top and bottom when you do that? That you lose a lot of what's going on on the screen, which is why most content creators on YouTube will, uh, when they're pre recording stuff, they will leave it as a square box, and that's what you'll see. Now, not everyone does that. A lot of people are happy to have it 
full screen and that is totally fine I've done that in some videos too but I personally like having it so that you can see the whole screen and that's how I do that what really makes this so much easier on this laptop is this bar down here and the ability to be able to use this as a second display that really allows me to be able to uh, do a lot more with this specific laptop the power in this laptop too is really good as well it uses a 2070 super and uh, it just blows through pretty much anything and it plays games really great too which is why I love this so I'm really thankful to have this thank you so much to Asus and Intel for sending it to me to review I'm gonna have some more content coming up about this computer and how it functions specifically for virtual reality and playing games in virtual reality but that is how you edit videos using my method for the quest 2 Hopefully that makes some sort of sense once you're all done that you're just gonna render it out If you want to add an intro and an outro then you have a finished and polished video It's a little convoluted unfortunately with the quest 2. That's how it goes But that's just the way it has to be until they give us easier share options If you want to find out more about this specific laptop, this is the Asus ROG Zephyrus Duo 15 with the 10th generation Intel i7 processor. If you want to get the most out of your quest, don't forget to hit that subscribe button down there and the bell icon for notifications. Plus, you can check out even more of my videos right there. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe and happy questing. Don't forget to head to the link in the description to find out more about the Asus ROG Zephyrus 15 with the 10th generation Intel i7 processor.